Martin Hyun, the first Asian player in the German Professional Ice Hockey League. He spent his youth studying and playing ice hockey in Germany, the United States and Belgium. After his retirement, he debuted as a writer, columnist and social activist. Martin Hyun has written books for second and third generation Koreans in Germany. Sie können die Sprache perfekt ähm, ja, in der Hinsicht uh, denke ich, haben wir alle Bedingungen erfüllt für eine erfolgreiche Integration. And founded the ice hockey organization Hockey is Diversity to protect the rights of minorities. Today on Heart to Heart, Martin Hyun, the second generation Korean German ice hockey star who currently serves on the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics organizing committee. Welcome to Heart to Heart, Martin. Uh, it's wonderful to have you joining us today. Would you like to say hello to our viewers that are watching Heart to Heart right now? Yes, hello. My name is uh, Martin Hyun. I'm a second generation Korean German. Uh, you cannot see, but actually I made in uh, Germany, but with Korean engineering. And uh, I'm, I'm working right now as the deputy sport manager for ISAKI for the Pyeongchang organizing committee for the Winter Olympics also a writer and a social activist and glad to be here. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're busy doing many things, taking care of many things, but as you just introduced yourself, you are serving as a member of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics Organizing Committee. Could you begin by telling us about your responsibilities there? Yes, uh, basically my responsibility is uh, to fulfill the ice hockey component of the Winter Olympics. Mm -hmm. Uh, with according to uh, standards of the IHF, which is the International Ice Hockey Federation. They have rules and regulations and standards uh, that comes with the Olympic Winter Games to mm -hmm. organize it. We have over 50 departments that we work together with that uh, do not know, of course, the, all the regulations, uh, what it needs to organize the ice hockey uh, Games. So this is uh, part of my responsibility to mm -hmm. explain them and uh, the needs and the service level that needs to be provided. I see. Now let's uh, go back to how everything started from your childhood perhaps. Um, so you, of course, you, your parents immigrated to Germany in the early 1970s, 1971 was it? And uh, I'm curious uh, to ask, what brought them to Germany back then? Yes, my, my mother came in 1971. Mm -hmm. My father came to Germany in 1969. Ah. And back then, my father was born in 1939. So back then, uh, Korea was uh, regarded as a uh, developing state. And yes. they, uh, there was not much of a future to expect for both of them. And, they just wanted to, uh, don't wanted to give up the, on their dreams. So mm. uh, the, the call for Germany came and then they went, they packed the things and they uh, flew to Germany and worked in the, the hospital there as a nurse, my mother and my father worked as a coal miner. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how it all started. Yeah, now I, I'm curious, did you watch the movie? It, it's called, it's a Korean film called Ode to My Father. Uh, the Korean title is Kuk mm -hmm. It's about Korean miners and nurses who were dispatched to uh, Germany in the 1970s. Um, I understand that your father at the time, long ago, was a miner and your mother was a nurse. So what was your impression of the movie? Uh, that is, if you, if you watched it. Yeah, I watched this movie. It's a wonderful movie. And uh -huh. I'm very thankful to the producers, uh, everyone involved in that movie, because this is a very historical piece yes. and it kept this uh, his history alive. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I cried tears watching that film as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh I cried so much. Um, it's actually one of my favorite films as well. Yeah. Uh, it's a movie that um, makes you think a lot and yeah, it was a very good movie. Yeah, uh, to be honest, uh -huh. I also had to cry even though men don't like to admit this, but <laughs> <laughs> I silently, it's, yeah. it, this movie goes straight to your heart. So yes. it's, uh, yeah, it is.
Let's move on to hockey. Okay, we can't leave that out. So um, when and how did you begin to play ice hockey? Uh, yes, I, the, the thing is my childhood, I grew up in a multicultural neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So uh, diversity was something very normal to me. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, I guess, everywhere in inner city neighborhoods, mm -hmm. the, the white flight. So basically that was very diverse, that part. And so I grew up with Turkish uh, migrant kids, uh, mm. kids from Poland, from former Yugoslavia, uh, and so on. And um, yeah, I started playing hockey when I was five years old. Five. Uh, yes, I, actually, I didn't want to play ice hockey. No? Because, but the thing is, I have to say, the hometown that I was born and grew up in uh -huh. is a hockey town. Uh -huh. And at that time, we also had a, a soccer team playing in the Bundesliga. Uh -huh. So basically, I was dreaming of becoming a soccer player, a goalkeeper in soccer. <laughs> but my father didn't like that idea. Hmm. My sister back then uh, was a figure skater. Oh. And we would always pick up my, my sister from her figure skating lessons. Mm -hmm. And I guess one day, a uh, coach approached my father and asked him, that uh, he was looking for kids to, to build a hockey team. Uh -huh. I, I didn't know what was going on and what they were discussing, but uh, the same day, my father took me to a hockey shop mm -hmm. and he bought me a pair of skates. And every kid likes to get presents. You oh, know? Of course. And I thought this is a nice present, even though it has steel blades <laughs> underneath, but I don't care. I, it's a nice present to have. And he, my father, I remember, he just looked into my eyes. My father's not a very verbal guy. Uh -huh. So he looked into my eyes and that was a verbal agreement between him and my, my father and me mm -hmm. that, okay, now you start to play ice hockey. So <laughs> this is how it started. Okay, well, when you started though, did, did you like it though? What was the first experience like? Getting yeah. in those skates and then, uh, you know, skating on ice or learning how to play ice hockey. Was yeah. it fun for you? At the beginning, I have to admit, I didn't like it because the ice surface is very hard if uh -huh. you fall onto it. And I fell many, many times. Uh -huh. and I wanted to quit, but my father, uh, he has curly hairs. And they say in Korea, someone has curly hair, very stubborn. Yes. And so he pushed me basically yeah. to keep the sport. Uh -huh. But for him, was uh, it was more like to, you know, not do wrong things, you mm. know, because I, I grew up in this multicultural neighborhood and uh, sport would teach me discipline. Mm -hmm. This this was something for my father. That's why he brought me into hockey. Yes. So. We often uh, talk about Taekwondo and say yeah. that it is a martial art. It's a sport that teaches you discipline. And um, I heard that hockey also is a sport that really teaches you discipline. It's, it's compared to life. Um, so we may even talk about that details in just a bit. Now, you were selected to play on the German junior national team. This was when you were only 15 years old. Yeah. And over the five years, you scored six goals and nine assists in 25 games. And then at 17, you were asked to join a professional team. Okay, yeah. but you turned down that offer and decided instead to go to America, to go to the United States to further your education. So please mm. tell us about that. Yeah, well, the process of becoming a member of the German Junior Nationals team uh -huh. starts a little bit earlier because you first, we have 16 provinces in Germany mm -hmm. and you have to first qualify to become a member of the provincial select team. Uh -huh. And if you make it there, you go to a big tournament in Berlin it's every year, held annually every year. And then uh, from there, all the scouts are sitting there to watch you play. Mm. So you play, for example, um, the, I'm from North Rhine-Westphalia. We play against Bavaria, for example. So we play against this team. This is uh, how it uh, started. I had a good tournament, mm -hmm. so the, the coaches liked me and then they invited me. So that's how I became a member of the, the national team. And then at 17, uh, yes, I was a member uh, of the Krefeld Penguins team. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the youngest on the team with already, uh, they're all men, you know, they're all, I don't know, 30, 35 years old. So, wow. Or like this, and it was a great experience. But at that time, uh, being 17 and just uh, just trying to focus on uh, professional hockey, mm -hmm. 
Um, this is something very hard to get by if you have Korean parents. Uh, so why, Korean why? parents, uh -huh. my parents always focused on education. Uh, so they always made sure that yes. I did my homework. Uh -huh. I, did, I did do my studies in school. Uh, hockey was just, just uh, a byproduct. It was mm -hmm. just to teach me self-discipline and get me off the street. So, yeah, this is... Uh, I felt I wanted to do it. I mm -hmm. want to become a professional ice hockey player. And, okay, then I, I will study, I will do both. And the I best see. thing for me was to go to the U.S. because the environment in the U.S. is set up very well mm -hmm. for a student athlete. You can oh. do both. Uh -huh. You can study and you can play. You can develop both. And it was the best decision that I made because at 17, you, you have not seen the world. You have, you, are, you have to experience the world, the mm -hmm. real world. You have to see things, experience things. And I was able to, uh, with my six years in the U.S., to develop my studies, to, to broaden my horizon, mm -hmm. and also to develop my hockey. And both were growing at the same rate, and that was very great for me. Exactly what you wanted. Yeah. So you went to America. Now, you graduated high school and college in the U.S. and even earned a master's in international politics in Belgium. Uh, you also finished your Ph.D. in Germany, so tell us about that. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it was my best decision, first of all, to go to the U.S., uh -huh. and I, I was... I had. I was fortunate enough to go to a very small uh, private uh, college mm -hmm. and the professors there were just wonderful and they just uh, sparked the, the fire in me to, mm. uh, to educate yourself, to empower yourself with knowledge. And, and this is when I started to basically kind of drift away from my dream to becoming a professional ice hockey player, mm -hmm. but to continue my studies uh, with my master's degree and then the PhD was just um, something, uh, not really for career-wise, but uh, I felt it was the right time um, to look into the Korean history mm -hmm. in Germany. And my PhD is basically focusing on Korean uh, migrant workers in Germany. I see. And uh, chronolo chronologically working the history from 1963 and before, uh -huh. before this agreement ma was made between Korea and Germany mm. that sent uh, Korean coal miners and nurses. Yes. Uh, I just felt that this is something that I need to do and any other topic can wait. Mm. And this topic cannot wait because the first generation, mm -hmm. um, they're all in their 70s, 80s and uh, how much longer will they be here? Mm. So this is something that I needed to do and I finished it in 2015. Um, very glad uh, for this. So this mm -hmm. was my academic journey. I see. Now, tell us about your career as an author. You briefly mentioned just now um, that you published a book. So this is soon after your retirement. You published a book on second and third generation uh, Korean Germans. Also, um, a book on first and second generation yes. Korean Germans. Um, and also appeared as a columnist on German radio. So tell us about that. What motivated you? Um, could you elaborate on what motivated you, uh, you to write those books? Yeah. The thing is, uh, in uh, I just wanted to write my first uh, book is basically on the first and second generation mm -hmm. Koreans, and the title is called uh, "Lautlos ja sprachlos mm -hmm. nein," which means "silent yes," silent which is, stands yes. for the first generation, "speechless no," because speechless we are not speechless anymore. Mm. We are speaking the the language very fluently. We can defend ourselves. Uh -huh. The generation of my parents were not able to defend themselves uh, in the German language. Mm -hmm. We can do this. We are fluent. Yes. So this is a, a book about that. And I, I wanted to introduce this book to the German audience mm -hmm. that uh, this uh, is also a part not only of the Korean history, but it's also part of the, the German history. Mm -hmm. Because in 1963, when the uh, the, you know, the sending of Korean coal miners and nurses started. This is the start of the, the German-Korean history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Ja. Und welche, welche Kapitel oder welche Stellen äh, wirst du aus diesem Buch äh, dort vorlesen? Also ich würde erstmal also drei Sachen, also einmal, warum Koreaner als Musterbeispiel der Integration gelten, anhand äh, meines Beispiels, meiner Erziehung von meinem sehr konservativen Vater, den ich äh, Chinesische Mauer genannt habe, <lacht> weil sein Spitzname ist Chinesische Mauer. Ähm, Nett. <lacht> und dann einmal, ja, zu Hause, dass es immer eigentlich Korea war, weil meine Eltern, ähm, wie sie es in den 60er Jahren verlassen haben, das Korea konserviert haben, hier in Deutschland mitgebracht haben und die, die Erziehung, die Kultur dann uns weitergegeben haben. Ähm, da gebe ich einen Einblick. So, Martin, you've achieved stellar success in Germany, and here you are in Korea. Uh, and I'd like to talk about a photo. Uh, there's a photo of you presenting Korea's late president, Noom Hyun, Han, uh, with a uniform during his visit to Germany. This was in 2005. And uh, mm. was there a reason behind you presenting a uniform to him? Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, show him that the times have changed mm -hmm. uh, to President No Mo Hyun. And I just, uh, it was just a symbolic nature for me because uh, in 1963, the times were different. Mm. And now we are the offspring of that generation. So we are, we are, we are, we are, we are uh, climbing up the social ladder in yes. Germany. Uh -huh. So that I wanted to show him that the, the, basically the development achievements. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you recall any of the conversations you exchanged with him? Yeah, I think um, uh, President No Mo Hyun, I felt uh, he himself was a very uh, big social activist mm -hmm. yes. back in his days. So yes. I just felt that it, it was very uh, good to tell him about something that is close to my heart. Mm -hmm. And that is, of course, the, the first generation Koreans in Germany. Mm -hmm. And I told him that the, yeah, the, the times have changed. And mm -hmm. back then when uh, they were blue collar workers and now we are standing here uh, in front of him within just one generation, having made that change. Um, and yeah, I just uh, told him that and, and, to, and asked him, maybe that was maybe too big, but to ask him, please do not forget about the millions of Koreans living overseas. Mm. Uh, you also participate in various philanthropic activities through sports. Uh, so what is your ultimate goal? Yeah, the thing is, um, I always, and this is what I was taught in America because I had great coaches and, mm -hmm. and great professors that there's more to life than hockey or more to life than sports. Mm. And you have to be very well aware what's going on uh, around your community and to get involved in the community. And we just have the, the privilege to, to just you know, do a sport that we love. Mm -hmm. and, but there's also an obligation to, to good things, mm -hmm. to get involved in the community. And that's the first thing I wanted to do in, in Krefeld. I wanted to tell also the players, guys, you have, you have an obligation. You know, I know you have families, but you also have an obligation to do things here. Uh -huh. You are here and you're kind of like an ambassador. So mm -hmm. in 2004, I started, um, like kind of, I, I don't want to call it charity work, but, uh, on Christmas Eve since 2004, I visit a children's hospital in my hometown mm -hmm. in, in Germany with other uh, world-class athletes from the hockey world, from swimming, from uh, wrestling and, I see. and so on. And we visit the, the, the hospital to present uh, those children with the gifts that we collect throughout mm -hmm. the year mm -hmm. because they are not able to go home for Christmas Eve. And, mm. And it's just uh, great uh, to, you know, uh, it's nothing that I just want to say, but to just see their reactions, just, just a smi little smile yeah. when they're fighting leukemia or mm -hmm. other diseases is so fulfilling mm -hmm. to you. You, know? it's, mm -hmm. uh, you just feel there's more to life than just a sport. Yes. And with my, my organization, Hockey is Diversity, which I founded in 2010, 
uh, I just wanted to promote diversity. This is something very close to my heart. I was the first uh, Asian to enter the league in Germany, and this comes also with an obligation to make the, the PAF other migrant kids or other kids from, not only migrant kids, but kids from broken home, from a, from a rough uh, background, mm -hmm. to pursue things, not maybe sport, but others, you know, other, uh, become a, a filmmaker, become a politician, become something uh, different. And this is what I'm doing with my initiative. Uh, we are we're going, we have this Big Brother project where we go into schools uh, that are known to have kids from broken homes and, uh -huh. and educate them, tell them, hey guys, there, there are different ways. You can, mm -hmm. you have choices, you know, you, you don't have to end up like this. Mm -hmm. And help them through our network to give them maybe internship opportunities mm -hmm. uh, with companies that they would never meet uh, in their real life, uh -huh. otherwise. Uh, but I, I believe in, in uh, encountering. You know, if you meet someone in person, you might have a different opinion of him mm. than what is made or shaped uh, from from other outlets. Mm -hmm. Wir leben in einer immer bunter werdenden Gesellschaft, und wir wollen mit der Initiative für diese eine immer bunter werdenden Gesellschaft werben. PS Diversity möchte darauf aufmerksam machen, dass Spieler unterschiedlicher Nationen, unterschiedlicher Herkunft, unterschiedlicher Ethnie und Religion. And Nat, uh, last but not least, we're down to our final question. Now, I am sure that you are looked up to as a role model um, to many people in Germany, even in other parts of the world. So is there maybe a message that you would like to deliver to immigrant families or, or children? Yes, I think I, I don't see myself as a role, med, role model, but I'm acting on behalf of the what my parents have, have taught me. Mm. And uh, uh, I just would like to say that, you know, as Germany is, Germany is a country of immigration and I'm fighting for, you know, diversity, uh, uh, fighting against racism. And Korea has become the same now. Korea is also a country of immigration. Many uh, migrant uh, kids are growing up here. Become, mm -hmm. They are Koreans. Yes. Uh -huh. And they will be also you know, uh, requesting to, to work uh, as a CEO for Samsung or mm -hmm. for those j companies. Mm -hmm. So this country has to be ready. And um, I hope that Korea will embrace them as theirs and also remember the part of the, the history, the, the migration history, wherever Koreans are in the world, in Germany, US or wherever, that the same experience Migr many migrants are doing here the same experience the Koreans did in the beginning in Germany. Yes. Uh -huh. So they have to remember this. And I hope, yeah, this is my message uh, to them that they will not forget about this history. Mm -hmm. um, well, I would like to say thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And I mean, you are living proof um, that, uh, you know, anyone Anyone can do whatever they're determined to do. Anyone can do whatever they hope to do. Opportunities are there. Um, chances are given to everybody. It's, uh, it's up to you, I guess. You need that passion to grab that opportunity, that chance uh, to fulfill your goals. And I wish you the best of luck um, in the work that you do in the social and uh, political matters, as well as the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Thank you once again for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.